a sunny day in a bustling city centre. The perfect place for new recruit Polly to hone her hustling skills. In the box drop. It looks like Polly is moving in, and she's looking for someone to help her get those removal boxes off the pavement and into her apartment building. On a busy day like this, she doesn't have to wait long. Right behind Mark number one is another new hustler, Jazz. Together, they plan to get the Mark to pick up one of these boxes and then drop it. But if you find the right Mark, they'll help you, but they have to pick up the box in a very particular way. They have to pick it up at the sides because it's only going to be taped, a little bit of tape on the side. So as soon as they pick it up, after about five seconds, it'll fall. I like it. We've got something that's expensive. There's a laptop. Now that's worth a couple hundred quid. Yeah. Okay. But we also have one that's broken. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Could you do me a favour? Yeah. Um, I'm just moving into the flat. Could you help as well, actually? I just need to bring them into For the For the thing. scam to work, the mark must pick up a box from the side nearest the door. That way, he won't see that the middle box is only held together by a tiny sliver of packing tape. But the mark instinctively goes to the wrong side. And spotting the opening, picks the box up from the bottom. The mark goes about his business, leaving the new hustlers empty-handed. Thanks very much. Will the hustlers look change with mark number two? Excuse me, you can do me a massive favour, could you? Literally, I've just moved in up there. I just need to get these boxes to the lift. Uh -huh. um, could you help me as well? Sorry, literally. Of it's just I don't want to wait here and then come back and then they're stolen. What do you want? Literally, I've just moved in. I just need to take them to the lift. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Is that all right? Could yeah. you just take one each? Thank you, you're a star. Oh, sorry, you've got a bag. Mm -mm. So far, so good. And finally... Oh, oh my God! Oh... Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my Do you have, um... Wrecked. Oh, and I don't care about my plates, but my laptop. Oh, do you have my insurance God. for it? Yeah, I do, but the excess is like 200 quid. I can't afford that. That's horrible. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? I start my new job next week. What are you doing? I'm PA with my laptop. Polly rolls out the sob story, and Jazz is there to play the gentleman. No, I've got 20 quid if that helps at all. No, I feel partly responsible for that. There's my card, give me a shite and let me know what happens with it. The Mark gives Polly a card, yeah, but no cash. cash. Is there nothing you've got, so I just feel really bad. I don't have any cash on me, no, I'm carrying it. Jazz gives no, him another don't, chance don't, to pay up. Don't fret or anything, look, I'm going to leave you my phone and I'm going to go to the cash point and get you another 40 quid. Get your son sorted out and drop me email. No good. The Mark is willing to help but it sounds like he's broke. Have you got any cash on you at all? Oh my God, it's just getting worse. Another mark slips through their fingers like a dodgily packed box. Polly and Jazz give it one more go with mark number three. Excuse me, guys, you couldn't do me a massive favour, could you? I'm just moving into the flat up there. I need to get these boxes. Could you help as well? Just to the lift, but I don't want to do it and then come back and the rest be stolen. So would you I'm give me a hand? Well, You'd give me a hand. Door? Yeah, literally. I just don't don't want to come back and then be gone. Do you know? <sighs> Thank you. This guy's world is about to come crashing down. Thank you. Oh, no, you've just broken my plates. Oh, my lap. Oh, my... Oh my god. What here? Oh my god, it's all smashed. Jesus. <sighs> do you not hold the bottom or something? Oh my god, what am I gonna do? I'm really sorry about that. Honestly, was that's obviously just been folded over the bottom, so don't take it. Well. The mark already feels guilty, so Polly turns up the pressure even more. I've just started a new job as well, and I need to take that next week. I've just moved in. Oh, I'm not worried about the plates, but look at my. <gasps> Oh my god, it's absolutely destroyed. Have you got, um, I can't I believe have this. Have you got, got insurance for it? <sighs> yeah, I have, but I've got to pay an excess of £200. I can't afford that. I've just moved here from London. This is awful. Oh Polly leaves Jazz alone to have a man to man chat with the Mark. Do you want to like, put, put some money in together? How much? I don't know, like, I don't know, 50 quid each or something towards our excess if it's 200. I just feel I'm, I just feel part responsible. I'm really I feel 
I know what it's like I'm moving shaking. to it. I'm shaking. I can't believe this has happened. I'm really sorry about that. that. Uh, I think we're both, we're both going to put some money in for you uh, to help towards the excess. That's news to him. Oh, should I put this in? Or... No, don't worry. I'll sweep that up in a minute. I'm not worried about the plates. It's just my, my laptop. This guy's still not flashing the cash. That's lovely, That's just what I thought. I know exactly what you mean. I just feel a bit like I know what it's like moving to a new. I just can't believe this has happened. I'm going to get some money up for you. Give you. I'll give you 50, and I think he's going to give you 50. And then at least put something towards, I mean, towards that would... getting it repaired. Yeah, you want to just double check? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's the wallet. The Mark feels so guilty for the broken laptop, he hands over £50 to a complete stranger. Jazz keeps up his end of the bargain too, though he knows he'll be getting his money back. The Mark heads off, thinking he's done a good deed. In fact, he's just been done. Oh, see you anyway. All right, mate. See you later. Yeah, I dropped a box that had a laptop in that in it and broke it. The guy who was carrying one of the boxes had offered to give her some money because she she'd brought up the conversation of money and he offered to give her some, so then he asked me as well. So I just felt I may as well chip in and you know help her out a bit, but obviously he took for a ride. This is quite a devious little scam, and as you've seen, even a pair of novice hustlers can fool you with it. You do someone a favor, next thing you know, you're reaching for your wallet. Hustlers have always exploited people's good nature to make them feel responsible for damaged goods. This person was a good Samaritan. He was trying to help this lady. An accident happens. He's got no liability whatsoever. He should never part with money under these circumstances. This is a straight rip-off. Let me tell you what we're going to do. Okay. Have you ever dabbled in stocks and shares? Well, a bit. Yeah. OK, good. That's good. We're going to give somebody the opportunity to double their money today. Okay. Now, you are going to be in charge of the trading room floor. Okay. okay. Really? You've got a few things to do that you've got to get them right. Right. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, come on, come with me. Gareth will be a long way from the stage and totally out of his comfort zone in the Stock Swindle. The hustlers have set up shop in a corporate office building, which they've hired for the day. This is the Mark. She's been invited along to hear about an investment opportunity and has been told to bring money. Jess is playing the role of a secretary and has brought the two young ladies upstairs. The first stop is the trading room floor to meet Rob Marks, the investment fund manager. I'll do me a favour, Smart. keep an eye on both sides because yeah, it's really yeah, yeah, important. This is Carrie and Georgina. Yeah. Hi there, you are Carrie. Carrie. Good. Nice to meet you. Um, welcome, this is our trading floor. Basically what these guys are doing is they're you know, looking at where all the opportunities are to buy and sell, basically make as much money as possible. We have a small advantage, but a very effective advantage. Now, what they're looking at is for any kind of increase and we have a little bit under a minute advantage on every other market in the UK. Well, it's all down to technology. I'll explain it in the room. And here's Gareth's first big role, the convincer. Right, guys, we're on 14.50 at the minute. As soon as it reaches 14.70, that's when we're going to be looking We're going to have a small window and you just need to blitz it, OK? He's playing the trading floor boss, assisted by trader and new recruit, Jazz. You see, we're all quite excited at the moment. We're, we're looking at gold right now, which gold goes up and down, but it's been going up steadily. For this scam to work, they must convince the Marks this is a legitimate financial business, and they're about to put on a show. Right, let's see if we get a big possible. So what we do is we basically buy it all at a low price and then sell it all at a high price. So we do it in a very, very quick turnaround. Three, two, one, and stop buying. Stop, stop now, so stop, stop buying. Now. Because the price is about to start going up. Guys, as soon as we say we need to start selling at 15, Tell 10, us when. 5, 4. It all sounds three, pretty convincing. Two, one, go. Sell, sell, sell at 15, So now they're going to sell everything. The price will keep going up, it'll steady out, and then it'll come down again. And we will have sold at the top. 
So anyway, why don't I take you around and explain? It's a little noisy in here, sorry. Gareth's performance seems to have done the job. Guys, thank you very much, Marius. And the girls haven't recognised him. So far, so good. Three, two, one, and stop That's trading. It. Stop there, guys. Stop trading, guys. Oh, yeah. Very good. All right, come on. Yeah. That's great. We, we basically just made about five hundred thousand pounds there, so it's not a bad. Paul thing. leads his clients away from the noisy trading floor. Let me take you through here. To an investor's lounge just down the corridor. All right, a seat. The girls settle into the lounge. Let me, let me just go and check one little thing. Uh, this is actually one of our investors, believe it or not, in the company. I'll just be right back. The TV is showing a financial news report, but Paul switches it onto a live feed from the trading floor. It's time for The Pitch. Every 20 years or so, the entire industry changes how it does business and how it transfers information. And if you think about it like TV moving from analog to digital, and next year everyone is rolling out to a new system. And that system is much faster than the information that we get just now. So when they get a price now, it's actually about a minute old. This is much faster. And it will be about 15 seconds old. So here's how the company works. TRH Trading have charts showing live prices from the Asian markets. It's a brand new system for Europe, and only they have it right now. It means they get information 45 seconds ahead of all their competitors. Bye, 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 come on, let's go. So they look for a peak in prices, buy low and sell high for a guaranteed profit. Stop trading, Stop there, guys. Stop trading guys, well done. And Paul's looking for investors to share a piece of the action. So. Um, if you're interested in investing with us, trade for a day with us, any amount of money you like, we guarantee to double it. And that's just as a welcome to the company, this is what we can do for you kind of deal. If you then decide to invest your money, not just the money you make, but hopefully the money, you know, that you're going to put in in the future, then we will basically discuss the kind of package that you, you would want, how much money you would make over the year. We don't double your money every month. In this one year advantage that we have, we try and guarantee everybody at least one third compound per month on the money that you put in. We know what's going to happen, we know how to make money with it, and we can guarantee our customers a very good investment for the first year. It's never failed. If I know I can buy something for a pound and that in 40 seconds everyone wants to buy it for me for two pounds, it's easy. Um, when we see that spike, you saw that spike earlier, did you see how big it got? When we see that, we know that we buy here and we know that we sell there. That's without any risk whatsoever. So yeah, if you bring money today, we'll double it for you. If anything went wrong, I'd give you the money out of my own pocket. I, that's how sure I am about this. I want you to kind of understand what we're doing. The most important thing is that you understand that we know what we're doing. Okay, I mean, the guys that you saw in the room there are some of the best and brightest from the business. They really know what they're doing. Why don't I give you some time to think about it? Um, Susie, mm -hmm. are you going down to the coffee shop? I can do. Would you mind taking these guys down there? Just give them some time. Yeah, sure. If you need to go to the bank or anything, all right? The mark doesn't have to make her mind up right away. Jess takes the girls downstairs to a nearby coffee shop to think about it. And I'll hopefully see you in a little while. Carl got your email. You did? Yep, Thank said you. everything's All fine. Right. Thank Take you. Take care. And as luck would have it, the party bumps into another couple of investors. Alex and the other new recruit, Polly. And that's hey. no accident. How are you? How are you? Good, good. Have you? Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got mine reported. Alex should look familiar to them, because he was the financial reporter they saw on TV just moments ago. And Bolivia were well, very, very strong suppliers of the Arabica bean. How could anyone resist valuable investment advice from this guy? He's here to give the company that final seal of authenticity. I love Rob, I've been working with him for, for years. We've been acquaintances, but my advice to you, and I wouldn't say this in front of Rob, but that's why I've sort of accompanied Jay, is if you're going to invest today, try and invest as much money as you can. Even if it's, you know, even if it's £100 here, £50 there, scrape as much of it as you've got because... So Alex's completely unbiased advice is to invest as much as possible. I brought somebody down and Rob hadn't sort of explained the terms as clearly 
And the guy sort of said, oh, all right, I'll do 500 pounds, you know, something small. And he made 500 back. And he went, oh, great, now, next time I'll do 2,000. And Rob said, no, I'm afraid next time is minimum of 10. So he just said, he looked at me, he said, oh, God, I wish I knew. I would have, I would have, you know, just got all the money I had. Has financial reporter Alex done enough to convince the mark to invest? She's about to find out you shouldn't always trust people you see on TV. Earlier today, Gareth Gates played the role of a futures trader, helping the hustlers convince this mark that she was dealing with a legitimate financial company. Now, now, Marius. Buy gold, buy gold. She's been offered the chance to invest and double her money in the same afternoon. We know what's gonna happen. We know how to make money with it. Sounds a little too good to be true, okay. as she's about to find out in The Stock Swindle, part two. The girls have arrived back at TRH Investments, accompanied by financial reporter Alex and his friend Polly, who's also a first-time investor. Even at a guaranteed 100% return, this is not yet a done deal. The hustlers will need to persuade the mark to actually invest her hard-earned money. This, this man will need some cash. <laughs> yeah, damn. <laughs> Polly is here as a convincer. And, uh, how much are you putting down today? Four. She hands over £4,000. The mark's eyeing the cash. Mine? Will she join Polly in investing? Um, and how much are you guys putting in today? This is a big decision for the mark. She's brought savings to invest in her future. But the hustlers have different ideas for her cash. Oh, great, go for it. And here comes the money. 500 pounds in cash borrowed from the mark's friend, then another 500 on her bank card. Being the hustler he is, Paul makes sure there isn't more where that came from. So much smaller than that other pile, isn't it? <laughs> at the end of the day, everybody says the same thing, that they should have put all their money in there. So if you have more money and you want to put it in, it'll take about an hour. Well, you know, we don't take it by pounds, but... Uh... The well is truly dry. Time for Gareth to take possession of the cash and card. But this is the first time the mark will come face to face with him. If he gets recognised, it's game over. Hi there, Rob. Do, you, do you want to process these for me right away? Sure. Try and get them in before the coffee futures sure. come in, please. And uh, take uh, 500 off of that card yeah. as well. Right. And uh, he'll have to hold on to the card until after trading, but that's, you know, that's fine. All right. Shouldn't take too long. Gareth makes a quick exit, taking the investments away with him. So, we're just sitting wait now. So you're looking at nice big... I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna, it should go haywire after the announcement. Now they just need to sit back and watch the traders work their magic on the CCTV feed. Everybody sell, sell, sell. Everybody sell like crazy. But what are the hustlers playing at? The mark's going nowhere until she gets her two thousand pounds return. Yeah, I mean, we're looking to go at twenty-three sixty at least. Yeah. Gareth's back from the trading floor, yeah. and he's got some very bad news. That's pretty... Yeah. And it's like, wrong. This is really, 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 downstairs. Downstairs? I'm on the way up now. Let me deal with it. Let me deal with it. Can you just, uh, sure. guys, I'll, I'll just be a few minutes. I'll... Sure, sure. Yeah. Something's wrong, and Paul goes to sort it out. You know, it's very exciting. When... <laughs> are you... Are you lost? Oh no. Panic breaks out on the trading floor. Oh no, this is, this, uh, this is really not good. Susie, is this is really bad. Who are they? Susie, uh, everyone needs to Hang be out. Hang on, no, 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 no. Shh. Everyone needs to be out. No, no. Who are they? Hang on, hang on. Shh. Is that a fire drill? No, it's not. The girls watch the CCTV feed in complete shock. Everyone is being arrested. And this whole operation is clearly not legit. Get, get, get your stuff, quick, quick, come on, gotta go, quick. What, what get, you just, just, shh, just get your stuff and go, come on. It's Hi, inside trading, it's illegal, there are people in there, you're gonna get arrested if you don't get inside downstairs trading. now. Shh, get, get your stuff now, come on. I've just given them my money though. I know, but sweetheart, you'll end up in prison if you don't get everything, come now. We don't want to be interviewed by these guys. Come now, now, come on. The shell shocked girls silently follow Jess, doing exactly what they're told. Hurry up, quick. 
This whole scenario has been created for one purpose – to make them scared of being arrested and get them as far away from the office as possible. If you stay here, you're going to get arrested if they come and find you, because this is called inside trading. You're using non-public information to gain I money. So to They've got no choice but to abandon the money and the credit card. If they want to avoid getting caught up in the fraud investigation, they've got to get out. Okay, well, listen, just go, listen, just go, go. The girls run off, shell-shocked and wondering what on earth just happened. We have no idea where anyone's gone or where our money is or anything. And I just saw it as a way of, you know, as a way of me getting myself started and saving. And everyone said it was a really good idea. I thought it would be. I felt such an idiot. So what really did happen? Marius, now, now, Marius. Buy gold! Buy gold! No surprises. It wasn't a real futures trading company. That market data was really just a looping graphic sequence created for the scam. Every four minutes, look, if you watch here, it goes up. It's perfect. Cool. Most fraud investigators were actually Alex, Jazz, and Polly. All right, people, well done. That was good. Of course, Alex and Polly were also in the investors' lounge when it all kicked off. And that's because the CCTV feed wasn't live. Gareth switched on a pre-recorded DVD whilst the girls were distracted. Oh, no. And as soon as the coast was clear, the hustlers ran the whole scam all over again with their next unfortunate mark. Wonderful. Fraud investigation department, everyone put your hands sits oh, down. Just get, get out quick. Go what do you mean? Get out. No, no, just get out now, please, otherwise you're going to get arrested. Just Inside of trading? Yes, yeah, just, just get out. Go. That was uh, dreadful, actually. I felt awful. And from the moment they walked into the room, uh, I just felt dreadful. My heart was racing. Uh, I avoided all eye contact with them and uh, tried to make sure they didn't sort of see me all that much. You know, I'm that bad person who's taken the money away. Paul has taken new hustler Polly out for a spot of sightseeing. Unfortunately, Paul's sense of direction seems to be on the blink. I think someone told me it's near a church. Neither of them has any clue where they're going. Where is the cathedral then? I have no idea. <laughs> In. The twist. Maybe one of these guys can show them the way. Sorry, no. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you know your way around here? I'm um, looking for Colton Road. Where are we here? We're. Uh, where you are, we're right? here. Yeah, that's where you are. Now. Sorry, let me There it is. That's Colton. There it is. All right. Straight, straight along there. Could you show thank her the way a little bit? Because I don't know, I just don't know my way around. All right, Sorry. thank you. Yeah, okay. all right. So is it literally long here? Yeah. Problem solved. Paul's got somewhere else to be. Of course, these hustlers are never off duty. I'm um, looking for Colton Road. They weren't really lost. They just wanted all eyes on the map to hide this. Paul's hand coming up to grab the mark's camera hanging around his neck. So what's this? With the gentlest of touches, Paul pushed the release button, twisted his hand and pocketed the Mark's camera lens. There. This way? Here it is again. Straight along there. Okay. Yeah, okay. Could you show thank her the way a little bit? Because I don't know, I just don't know my way around. All right, Sorry. thank you. Yeah, all right. So is it literally long? Before the theft was discovered, Paul went on his way. And by the time the mark noticed his photographic problem, his lens was long gone. A camera can be worth a lot of money, but a good lens will cost hundreds, even thousands of pounds. And it's much easier for pickpockets to lift. But why steal one lens when you can have a whole selection? Sorry, I have no idea. I'm from London. This guy is being very suspicious. So where are we now? We are somewhere. He's even resting his elbow on the lens. 
No way for Paul to steal it, so he moves on. I don't know, it's very nice. Yeah. But no such precautions from the hustler's other customers. It's around here ish. Paul is making his move in the open, but none of his actions draw any attention from members of the public. The gallery. Sorry, I really have my first day here, so I have no idea. Excuse me. Does anyone um, know where the cathedral is? Sorry. Um, I'm not so sure. Could that be Cannon Street? So we're here. No, this is Queen Street, isn't it? Cannon Street's behind us. So yeah. Queen Street. Um, um, Queen Street. Queen Street. Queen Street. How would you? Hello. Yeah, I'm just inside. Hold on. The marks are left with cameras around their necks, but they won't be taking any photos today. Is it not very clear, this map or something? Yeah, it's just... Jordan. Holton Road. So if I go along there and head that way, it's along there. Yeah? Right. Is that right? Yeah, right. Lovely. OK, thank you. I didn't realise until I uh, started walking uh, to show her, and then I looked down and it was... They've gone. I was talking to this tourist and he just nicked the lane and just plagued it. 700 pounds worth of camera. It's yours. I still owe 600 pounds on it. All right, thanks for your help though. Cheers. Some hadn't even noticed their lens was gone. This is from his call. Just the first time I've. Mm. Oh, that went. What are we going to do with the rest of the day? It's lovely. Let's do some um, shopping. I do need a camera for my lens. Perfect. Yeah. This scam works because people hang their cameras around their necks and forget about them. It gives them a false sense of security knowing that the gadget is physically attached to them. But some lenses are much more expensive than the cameras themselves and much easier to steal. Very often when we're out with our cameras, it's the time when we're most relaxed. We're enjoying some free time, we're sightseeing. Often we're in crowded areas. That's when you're most vulnerable. If you feel somebody brushing against you, turn around, see what's happening. And try and remember to keep your camera in front of you. Jess is out on the town and has made some new acquaintances. Someone is going to have to get the next round in and Jess is going to make sure it's not her. I've got a challenge for you. Okay. But I, I need you to help me set it up first, so you're going to help me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK. So I've got some cocktail sticks here. Yeah. Uh, now there's four of us, I need five, so I'll do two and you can all do one each if you don't mind. Three. There you go, there's one, two, three, four. And I've got five. Snap it in the middle, but don't actually break it. Just like that, I want it to be as close to the middle as possible. So if you can all do that with your cocktail sticks, but don't snap it completely in half. So if you just give me your cocktail sticks. Okay, so I've got five here, I'm gonna put them all together to make like a 10 point star, like that. Now, I'm going to pick one of you to do this, so I'm going to pick you. Really? So the challenge is, I've got a ten-point star there. Without touching the cocktail sticks, I want you to turn that ten-point star into a five-point star. Now, if you can do that, I will buy you a drink. If you can't do it, then you have to get around him for everyone. Great. Deal? Yeah, <laughs> deal. Excellent. So, to win a drink, Jess's new friends need to turn this 10-pointed star into a 5-pointed star. The only thing is, they can't actually touch the toothpicks. Go for it. Without touching them? Yeah. Can I blow them? Um, if, if, if that's what you want to do, you can try it. Have a go. Have a go. If this is your challenge. You can do what you want without touching the cocktail sticks. OK. Go. I can't think of anything else to try. Okay. So. OK, that's not a, um, that, that's not a, that's not a five-point star. No. I've only actually got three cocktail sticks left. You just blew them off the table. I didn't that, have any that's idea. fine. So I'm going to set these up. That's roughly how they were before, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. OK. Now, obviously, I said you couldn't touch them. I didn't say you couldn't use anything. Now, I'm not going to touch them. I'm going to use a little bit of water. Oh. Oh, oh. oh I do love this bit when no it's way. done. <laughs> oh, I love this bit. <laughs> That's how she is. It seems impossible, unless you know how. A couple of drops of water make the wood in the toothpaste swell up. 
straightening them out to form a five-pointed star. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'll have oh, a show tonight. You okay? When you yeah. Go? Oh, Thanks. Go and then soon. Here you go. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hi. Colin. I'm yes. Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Nice to meet you. Excited? Good. Very. Nervous? I'd say buzzing. Excellent. How is your poker face? Oh, brilliant. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. You're going to be the um, journalist of a poker magazine. OK. And your job today is to rope in Mark and persuade them to join you in a poker game. This game is theirs and to really dig deep in their pockets and play as much as they can. You up for it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You ready? Come on, yeah. then. Colin's a keen poker player and will be right in his element. But he's never played a card game like the one he will today in The Cross. Alex has arranged to meet some poker players at a trendy bar, inviting them to play in a private game he's organised for later this evening. Paul is playing the role of another player invited to the game and takes a seat inside whilst Alex keeps an eye out for the mark. And here he is, right on time. Hello, how you doing? You're right. One of the guys is here. Alex brings the mark and his mate in to meet Paul, then leaves them alone to get to know each other. How are you, Nick? Sorting stuff down to the table and everything. We should be ready to go soon. No worries. All right. OK. OK. Yeah. Oh. Where'd you boys play? In the Vic. In the Vic, yeah? Yeah, that's why you play, yeah. I've been there in ages. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know the poker magazine guy's coming tonight. You know about this guy? This guy coming from a new, uh, a new poker magazine who's doing an article on, I guess, private games, stuff like that. It's a new magazine, it's called Poker Something, I can't remember what. I mean, it's brand new, I'm literally brand new. Paul is being a little vague, almost as if he's making it up on the spot. So when you play, do you play any side games or any side bets or anything like that when you're... Do you... Right. Would you play Kaluki or Backgammon or anything like that? I just love games. Really? Especially when they're, they're probably for games again. That's music to Paul's ears. This guy that's coming in, we're actually going to do an article about that kind of thing, about games you can win. I'm going to show him Nim before we play tonight. You ever heard of Nim? You can do it with straws, you can do it with matchsticks. It doesn't matter, but you can only take one, two or three. And whoever's left with the last one is the loser. <laughs> For the first part of the scam, Paul needs to persuade the mark to do him a favour. He wants to play a trick on the poker journalist that's about to arrive, by challenging him to a game he's guaranteed to lose. The thing is, that if you know the secret, you can always win. Yeah. If I have him bet with you, would you bet against him? What, knowing that? Knowing that I'm going to win. So in other words, I'm playing for you. If you're guaranteeing it, yeah. All right. I need you to sneak a bottle cap onto the table when he's not looking. You'll get the idea. When he comes in, it's just easier if someone else does it. The mark agrees to help Paul play a trick on the journalist. And here he is. It's Colin. Are you Rob? I'm Rob. Oh, sorry. Nice to see you. Colin? Yeah. I'm Nick. Nick, how you doing? Alex, who's posing as a member of staff for the bar, brings a box full of bottle caps for their game of Nim. That's fine, whatever. Yeah. I brought this thing to show you. All you have to do is take one, two or three caps. Aye. Whoever ends up with the last cap is the loser. Aye. All right? So here's the idea. I'll play against you, but uh, you can bet against one of these guys. I'll bet with you. All right. OK. It's a simple game. Each player takes a turn removing one, two or three caps. The player to take the last cap <laughs> loses. And sure enough, Paul wins. I believe that's yours. OK. So that means you owe him a turn. Right, okay. The exact number of caps mean Paul will always be able to leave one behind if Colin goes first. You go first. I go first. I don't. I don't. But this time, Paul goes first. Now he'll lose unless the mark adds that extra bottle top. I can take from any picture jack up. Colin pretends to be distracted, giving the mark the perfect opportunity. I'll take over here. Okay. First one. <laughs> and Colin loses again. Paul comes clean about the little scam. When you were looking away... Oh, you dirty dog. He snuck in an extra one. Right? When he puts an extra one in, I just take that one away. Brilliant. So you're still going first. That's brilliant. This whole scenario has been carefully crafted to suck the mark in. 
He's demonstrated he's willing to play a prank by cheating. And he's been rewarded by making money on the bets. Colin's now going to ask him to cheat See? in a slightly bigger way. This is, this is an interesting one because uh, the article after the game is meant to be written from the point of view of how the game could have been cheated. Cheated? Yeah, we're doing a whole issue on like what you need to watch out for when you're playing. You're cheating it as in you've got cards up your sleeve, like. Yeah, stuff like that, you know, I mean, cheating, you know, dealing off the board. So... Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Really? Okay, nice I, have a, I have a proposition for you, right? Let's cheat the game properly, and I'll cover the boys who lose. What do you mean, you? So, to, right, if I could actually interview people who were in on cheating the people out of money, but I guarantee the people who lose money I give them all their money back tomorrow. And you two keep what you win. I just think that's, yeah, that's you know, awesome like, to be involved in and you can be talking about being in on it. So long as they get their money back. No, what, not, what do you mean to get their money back? They get the star in the new magazine. <laughs> it's perfect. So the game will be rigged in the Mark's favour for the article. He can keep the winnings and Colin will reimburse the losers. Who's going to win? One, two, three, four or five? Paul demonstrates how he can control the cards whenever it's his deal. That's hand three, right? Yeah. Okay. Holy <laughs> should usually win. It's one of those things that looks easy, and if I didn't hit, hit you in the face with the cards when I tried it. Practice. Yeah. Must have taken some practice. It's easy to give you the ace if it never moves from the top. Yeah, look. It's easy to just keep dealing. Yeah. But will the mark go for it? Look, well, I'll give it a go. The thing is, I'm only cheating when I'm dealing. Okay, I'm not going to cheat on anyone else's deal. That's important. Yeah. The hustlers lead the mark downstairs to a private room for the game. This guy is already an experienced poker player, and with Paul's card manipulation guaranteeing him good hands, he's in for a great game. What could possibly go wrong? I can't be that unlucky. Alex has arranged a private room in the basement for the game. He's even got a barmaid on standby to serve the drinks. Susie, who'll be serving some drinks. I've done it right. It's actually Jess. The Mark meets the other players, whose money, with a little help from Paul, he plans to win. First, the players buy into the game. The Mark gets out a thousand pounds in cash. How much you got there? Yeah. The cards are in the air, and the game begins. Each player in turn acts as the dealer, shuffling the cards, handing the deck to his neighbour to cut, then dealing out the hands. Oh yeah, do that all night. Yeah, yeah. Keep showing. The mark is playing the game as he normally would, but he's really waiting for Paul's turn to deal. Jack five, but every time I get it, I always go. <laughs> 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 I'm always like this, never over until the thirty. Don't you? Whoa. Yeah. Finally, it's time. Paul carefully manipulates the cards during a shuffle, arranging them so that the mark will get a very strong hand. But it'll only work if Colin does his job properly. He has to cut the deck at exactly the same point Paul cut it. That way, they'll be back in the order Paul intended them to be in. It's good, it's perfect. Colin had just minutes to practice this move before the scam began. Good. That's it. Oh. This is Colin's big moment. Just one card out either way, and Paul will deal the wrong hand to the mark. Oh, oh, you do. Got to hit it to me. Uh, no, yeah. but yeah, I like it. All right, blinds it. The mark is unaware of the move, but knows things are going to plan when he sees the hand Paul's dealt him. A pair of kings. His job now is to get as many chips into the pot as possible and draw in his opponents with weaker cards. Let's give the blind some value. But everyone else folds. The mark only wins three pounds. Not exactly what he had in mind. The game continues and it's another 20 minutes before it's Paul's turn to deal again. Once more, Paul shuffles, 
and Colin makes the rigged cut. This time, Paul deals the mark, ace king, another huge poker hand. All right, so I'll make it 20. Fifteen's not good. But once again, everyone folds. Is that it? Is that it? Oh, well, so good, right, man. Right, so this cheating thing is not as easy as it seems, and the mark is getting very frustrated. <coughs> Should we have a little three minute break? Is everyone alright with that? No, it's fine. Let's yeah. have, have a break. Yeah. Get... Oh. Uh, the game breaks for a few minutes, and the cheaters confer. Well, it's, um, it's all well and good cheat, but no one's playing. Paul suggests a new tactic. That's a grand of my money. You put in whatever you've got, put in whatever you've got. Buying more chips so he's covered, mm. and I'm going to hit him with a hand as well. It's called a double duke. He'll not only give the mark a big hand, he'll make sure someone else at the table also has a big hand. And the mark should then bet as much money on that one hand as he possibly can. Right, so, so before we play, buy in for more chips. All right. Right, okay. Paul gives him an additional thousand, and the mark borrows 500 pounds from his mate to make sure he wins as much as possible. Yeah. Anybody wanting to top up or anything like that? Yeah, I'll see by it. How much? 1500. Another 15? Yeah. yeah. The mark buys in for the extra money. Sorry, is this someone's coat? Oh, that's mine. Sorry, oh, I left it upstairs. Sorry. Someone looks upstairs. Did you get, oh, was Did you get much out of it? Or? <laughs> Excuse me, look. Did I bring you down your drink? You did, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, you didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> The game restarts, and it's the Mark's deal. As luck would have it, he's dealt himself two aces. The best starting hand in poker. And that was without Paul's help. All right. Family pot, love it. This time, he's getting some action from the other players. Yeah. Do that all night. Yeah, yeah. Keep showing. The first shared cards come down in the middle of the table. Well, that's good for some, man. There are the other two aces. The mark is now sitting with an almost unbeatable hand of four of a kind and around two and a half thousand pounds to play with. Five five friendly, I'll just raise it. Fifty's the bet. Wow. Really? Even though this isn't one of Paul's rigged hands, he's firing out the bets. 100. Good boy. Re -re -re 100's 100. the bet. <clears throat> he can't believe his luck. Other players are also putting their chips in the middle. Opportunities like this don't come along very often. Oh, we'll have to raise it. 200. OK, that was 50. The call 150 was 50, raises. the full bet's 200. 200. 200. It's another call. 300 to bet, gentlemen. What the hell? No chance. Okay, the final card goes down. The mark has one of the strongest possible hands in poker, and only one other hand can beat him. But it's so unlikely, he has no choice but to get all his chips in. I can't do that. So, I'll wait all in. You're all in, right? I'm all in. Yeah. Paul and Colin look a little worried. This isn't the plan they agreed. The mark was only meant to bet big on Paul's deal. And he's betting not just with his money, but theirs too. Wow. What? Really? What's going on? I've never seen anything like this. All right. Holy moly. What's that? There's now more than £8,000 on the table. The cards. I turned over. He had the king. Oh, he had the flush. I got the jacks. What have you got? Sucked out on me. The mark turns over his aces. Wow. Oh, game oh. What have you got? Oh, you. What have you got? Sucked out on me. And then he sees the one hand he was dreading. What have you got? Another player turns over. A straight flush. No way. Okay. Okay. No. He's got, He's got straight, straight flush. Why? He wins it. It's a disaster. Not only has he lost his money, he's also managed to lose the money Paul gave him as well. That's an expensive hand. Wow, what a coup. See that one coming, boys? The rest is... Uh, I'm gone, Jesus. guys. Thanks. Thanks so much. Cheers. All right, thank you. <laughs> the game breaks. Well done. Well done. Dude. That's sick. Well done. Well done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The mark leaves with empty pockets, and he owes Paul another thousand pounds. Paul is left in silence. It's unbelievable. Colin tries to work out what just happened. 
He assumed he was going to take the mark's money, not some random stranger. I've never, ever seen that online. What the hell just happened? I that the cannot guy... happen. I'm sorry, it can't happen. I thought the guy was waiting on your cue. All right, here's the thing. In a normal game in someone's house, the odds of that are like six million to one or something like that. The odds of that happening with you two shysters at the table <laughs> are more like evens. What are you trying to see, Colin? Sam? And it was, it was brilliant. There he is. There's the player. <laughs> sure enough, here's the winning player. Not some random stranger, but working for the hustlers all along. It's just beautiful. It was beautiful. And I'm never playing poker again with people I don't know. So how did the Mark lose all his money on his own deal? That's not bad. Thank you, mate. During the game, Jess arranged a duplicate deck of cards into a pre-arranged order. She then slipped it into Alex's coat pocket. She hung the jacket over the back of Alex's chair whilst the game was in mid-flow. <laughs> and when the Mark had the maximum amount of chips in front of him, she waited until he'd shuffled the cards then asked him about his drinks order. Excuse me, love. Did I bring you down your drink? The tiny moment of distraction was all Alex needed to switch the shuffled deck for the rigged one. Sorry. Sorry, you didn't mean to interrupt. Anytime you like that. The Mark then passed out the cards, not knowing he was dealing himself a hand that no poker player would be able to pass. From this point on, he was guaranteed to lose every penny in his pocket. He's got straight flush. No way! The hand, there were so many pairs in the hand. Everyone had a full house. I had quad aces and, and he got a straight flush, so I lost about two and a half grand. Yeah. Adding it all up. That's just the way it goes sometimes. It's, it's, luck comes in many guises, as they say, so. And it weren't my lucky night, so. It was wrong, but I can't help but admire the workmanship and the craftsmanship and the genius of what they pulled off at that table. I would never do it, morally wrong, in all honesty. Like, I feel it is a moral game. He would have actually rang Rob tomorrow and given him another thousand pounds on top of his kind of unbelievable. It's an eye opener. 20 quid's my max from here on in. Jess, Alex and Paul are taking a trip in the hustle van. And judging by the temporary branding on the sides, they're out on business in The Upgrade. The hustlers are doing some cold calling in a residential neighbourhood. And they're specifically targeting people with a visible satellite dish. I work for TRH Installations. We're doing a scheme on your street today. It's my colleague just next door. Jess points to Paul a couple of doors down. I'm just over there. Two it's people in matching jerseys on the same street. They must be legit. Do you have a satellite? Can I ask you? Today we're doing a, a scheme. What we're going to do is we're going to offer for a whole year access to every single channel. All the sports, um, all the films. Also, you know all the box office channels that you usually have to pay for? Doing all of those as well so you'll have access to every film. What we do is we swap your card over. Give you a new card, activate it in 90 minutes. It's £50 for the entire year. Um, all we want to do is at the very end is if you fill out a quick survey telling us how you found it. So Jess and Paul work for a local satellite company and are signing people up for an Access All Areas promotional deal. For a one-off top-up fee, existing satellite subscribers will get all premium channels for a year and it only costs £50. Pounds. For the entire year. As long as you do the survey. Then... As long as you do the survey, yeah. It takes about two seconds. Does something be interested in? Like I said, for £50 for the entire year, yeah. It's a great scheme. Shall I go and get one of the technicians for you? Right. You can come. He's already done a few houses right now. I'll go get them for you. Okay, no worries. Alright, So we're done. Got the um, give me the card you've got and I'll go and get you a new one. Looks like the hustlers have a customer. Right, do you want to replace that? Aye. Right, it'll be £50 Aye. Um, if you want the card just now. Aye. Great, OK, I'll do that for you. I'll be right back. In order to upgrade their package, Paul needs to swap the viewing card for a new one. Alex must have a stash of new viewing cards in the van. Because after some paperwork, Paul returns bearing a welcome package, complete with a VIP viewing card. Paul puts it in the receiver. 
Right. And you've still got everything here, which is good. It must really be a legitimate viewing card. Otherwise, it simply wouldn't work in the receiver. That'll be £50. There's just a small matter Thank you very much. of the one-off fee. I'll be right back with your receipt. Okay, no worries. Actually, no one will be getting a receipt because as soon as they've got the cash, the hustlers jump in the van and are gone. So what's really going on? OK, I'll do that for you. I'll be right back. The secret's in that brand new viewing card the hustlers are getting from Alex. Here's what the marks didn't see. Alex took their existing viewing card, gave it a bit of a clean, added a sticker to make it look new, and handed it back to Paul attached to a bogus welcome letter. Right. All the marks' old channels reappeared. Perfect. Of course they did. It was their own viewing card after all. Right. That'll be 50 pounds. They all paid £50 for a little green sticker and an official-looking letter. Get your media. Need easy. Unfortunately, those premium channels will never appear, no matter how long they wait. 50 quid for all the channels, that was that. Um, the guy who was pretty convincing seemed to know what he was talking about. People look genuine enough to me. The guy came in, the card related to the headline on the paper. Yeah. His van was all logoed up, so I'd seen all that. She told me she was going to come back with her seat, but she hasn't came back yet. Unlimited satellite for £50 seems too good to be true, but it's the small details that make this scam convincing. Companies do occasionally run trial schemes for new services, and with the badges, uniforms and official-looking van, this offer seems completely legit.